Moving on to the next example, what is the future value of $100 invested at 6% compounded interest per year for eight years? So we're going to solve this in two different ways, algebraically and how we would do it with a financial calculator. So algebraically, it's pretty simple. We would just use that formula that we introduced in the previous video. So the present value is what we're investing. So it's the $100. And then the interest rate, it's 6% uh, per year and it's compounded. First off, this is compound interest. So we know that we're using the compound interest formula. So the one with an exponent. So anyways, the uh, rate is 6% and it's for eight years. So then adding the bracket, one plus 0 0.06 would give us 1.06. And then 1.06 to the power of 8 would give us 1.59385. And then multiplying those out, we would end up with a final future value of $159.38. So investing $100 at 6% compounded for 8 years, you would end up with 159.38. And if they were asking you how much interest did you earn throughout that time period, we would just take that future value of 159.38 and subtract it from the present value of a hundred. So the interest that we earned was $59.38 over that eight years. Now with a financial calculator, the way we would solve this is you want to look for these five buttons. Now I'm not going to actually go through the mechanics of how to input the numbers, but I will tell you what the inputs are. So on your sheet, you always want to pretty much write out these five variables and then fill them in before punching them into your calculator. Now, the first variable, the N, basically represents the number of periods that we're dealing with in the scenario. So the first thing you have to know is what is one period? Is it half a year, a quarter year, is it a year? And in this case, because we're dealing with interest per year and they're asking us for eight years, we can be pretty confident that the period of time we're dealing with is years. So we're trying to find the future value of something after eight years, so we know that our N is going to be eight. The next variable, this I slash Y, basically represents the effective interest rate per period. Now the word effective will go into more detail in future videos, so perhaps maybe just ignore that word for now and just think of this IY as the interest rate per period. And we already established that the period of time we're dealing with in this scenario is years, so the interest rate per period is 6%. So this IY here would be 6. Now most calculators want you to put this in percentages. So you would put the actual six here. Notice when we did algebraically for the R, we had to use the decimal form. So it'd be 0 0.06. But when you're inputting it into most financial calculators, this has to be in percentages. So you would just leave it as six. Next variable is this PMT amount, which is short form for payment. And what this represents is the cash flows that happen per period. So in this case, the, any cash flows that happen per year. And if you look at our scenario, there are no cash flows happening per year. There's only a single cash flow that we invest in $100, and then we're going to get back a certain amount of cash flow at the end of eight years. There's no other cash flows in between that. So the cash flows per period here, or the PMT amount, is zero. Now when we get into dealing with multiple cash flow scenarios, then we'll have amounts that we have to input for PMT. So for example, if we invest $100 per year for eight years, then this PMT amount would be 100. But because we're only investing that $100 once at the beginning, there are no other cash flows that are happening per period, hence why it's zero in this case. Moving on to the next variable, the PV. Pretty self-explanatory, it's basically the present value. And in this case, it's the $100. But what you wanna be careful when you're dealing with these variables, the PV and the FV, is positive and negatives. Because you're investing the $100, so you're giving $100, that's a cash outflow for you. So that's a negative cash flow for you. So this would be negative 100. So then the future value, we don't know what that is. We're actually figuring that out. So here you would put a question mark because that's what we're actually computing. So what you wanna do is you wanna write out 
these five variables, make sure that uh, you have a number for four out of the five of them, and then for the one you're solving, just put a question mark. And then when you actually compute the future value, once you've inputted those uh, four other variables, you would get 159.38, and you'll actually get a positive amount. So what that means is that you're getting 159.38 because initially you invested it, so it was negative 100, and now you're getting it back. So that's uh, positive. It should come out positive in your calculator. And notice how this amount is the same as this amount that we calculated algebraically. So two different ways. I, uh, again, didn't go over the mechanics of how to actually input or compute variables in the financial calculator. But in future videos, I will always list these out and tell you what the actual inputs are. Yo, what's up guys? Thanks for checking out my channel. Hopefully you got some value from the video you just watched. If you did get some value, big favor to ask you, please like this video and subscribe to the channel. Any questions, any recommendations on things you'd like to see, please leave it in the comments section. Also check out the description box below for links to material and content related to the video you just watched. Peace out.